Um, all right, so the, uh, the sermon I've been asked to preach this morning is uh, on the statement of faith that we believe that those who are not saved will spend eternity in a literal lake of fire called hell. So what is hell? Matthew, 27, uh, Matthew 25 says it's made for the devil and for his angels. You know, it's described as a pit and as a place of fiery torment. So Luke 16 speaks about it being a place of fiery torment. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but in Numbers 16, verse 28 to 33, it says this, And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up, and with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Uh, they and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. So this is, this is God's judgment on those, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, who were actually standing up against Moses, the man of God. Um, so God sent them straight down to the pit of hell. Um, and that was a brand new thing that he's never done, never done since. But the punishment for sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. So, but it's not just a physical death, you know, but they will all see death. That's a place called hell or the lake of fire, which is the second death. And in the book of Job, we see this description. Job knew about the judgment to come and the salvation also. So in Job chapter 21, verse 27, it says, Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, Where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his, his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he hath done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. So his body's going to remain in the grave and the tomb until the day of judgment. But they're going to stand, well not stand, but they're going to be in front of the great white throne judgment, you know, where, um, where the Lord is the one who's going to judge them, who's going to repay them. Um, but he's already tasting of the fires of hell. In Luke 16, which is the, the story of uh, Lazarus and the rich man, um, we'll start in verse 22. It says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. So the moment he dies, he sees, he's in the pits of hell. He feels that fiery torment. And he's looking up to Abraham and asking to send Lazarus, that he can, he can give him some water. Um, and yeah, it says, so and between all this, between uh, us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from you to hence cannot, neither can they pass to us, that would come from thence. So there's no way again, you know, once you die, you're either in heaven or you're in hell, and there's no way to change between the two. Once you're there, you're there forever. Um, and to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You know, and this goes both ways. So when you die bodily in the Lord, you awake in heaven. When you die bodily, having not believed, you awake in hell. You know, just as the rich man and Lazarus. So I'll get you to turn to Revelation 20. I'll read from Psalm 1. Psalm 1, 5 says, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So there is that separate judgment for those who were not born of God. You know, those who were not saved, they will see the great white throne judgment. Revelation 20 verse 11 is where we'll see this great white throne. It says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So how do you get your name in the book of life? By being born again, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. It's not at works, but by faith alone. You know, so if you fail to do that in this life, your fate is this lake of fire. In Revelation 21, it also lists those who will be cast into the lake of fire. And one of the first being the unbelieving. Because in this, in this world, there's two types of people. Those who have believed, sorry, those who do believe and those who have not believed. Um, so yeah, and he, and he that sat upon the throne said, so Revelation 21, 5, said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So who is he that overcometh? You know, this is the same as he whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, they will have no part in the second death. Revelation 26, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. 1 John 5, verse 1. says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also as begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So again, it's just our faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah, who is he that, believe, that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So just as we receive eternal life for our faith, those who don't have faith, who are not found written in the book of life, they're going to suffer an eternal punishment. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 says, Which is the manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing is it a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power when he shall be gloried, glorified in his saints to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So the torment for all who go to the lake of fire is eternal. It makes it clear that it's an everlasting destruction. But the wrath of God with our mixture is reserved for those who take the mark of the beast, and they will receive a worse punishment in the lake of fire. Uh, in Revelation 14.11, it says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So that's us. You know, it's the new man. He's the one who keeps the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. But the false prophet, Antichrist, and Satan himself are going to spend eternity receiving the fullness of the wrath of God as well. So it says, Revelation 20.10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. So nobody escapes the judgment of God. And the judgment is a lake of eternal fire. So we'll conclude with Matthew 25, verse 46. It says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So there's only one way to be righteous. There's only one way to avoid the pits and fires of hell and the second death. And that's to believe in the name of the Son of God, to put all your faith and trust on Jesus Christ, to have his righteousness imputed unto you. John 11, verse 25, said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So this is why we ask these questions when we go out soul winning. You know, are you a sinner? Do you deserve to go to hell? 
Do you believe Jesus paid for all your sins through his death and shed blood on the cross? You know, so that's a question to ask yourself, but also those who maybe you're not convinced of their salvation. You know, believest thou this? So if we don't want anyone to go to this place of fiery torment. You know, that's why in Jude it says, and some have compassion making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. So that's what Christ left us here to do, to pull them out of the fire, because all those who have not believed on the Son of God have their part in the lake of fire.